Good morning from Miami. This is Dr. John Bennett televising another, number three in the daily dosage of neurosurgery education with Hypecharian from, from Nepal. Um, we have an unusual approach. We're going to try to utilize Facebook Live to let people know what's, uh, that uh, IP is speaking now. Uh, so I, we're going to watch I do, actually do his Facebook Live right from his smartphone, live on Zoom. <laughs> Good morning, I. Yes, I'm going to come live now. Yeah, he's doing Facebook. And you guys and you guys in the panel can do that also if you want. You can go onto your Facebook Live and actually. Good evening. We are uh, going live on Facebook again on uh, Neurosurgical Daily Dosage, uh, Volume 3. The first day we told about uh, the characteristic classifications. The second day we talked about the principles of uh, anterolateral skull base. Today we're gonna we're gonna be showing uh, a dissection of anterolateral skull base and a case which is used, uh, which which has used this principle. So I would like you all to tell tell you, I mean, amongst you, the neurosurgeons. The young neurosurgeons who are watching, please come on to Neurosurgical TV. And in Neurosurgery TV, that you will have a you will have something to you will have the link to get in. And you follow the link, get into Neurosurgical TV, be a panelist or an attendee. And uh, we are going to be talking about how the Dawlings approach is done. You know, it's one of the most difficult approach uh, approaches in skull base surgery. We have made it very, very simple. So uh, we're going to tell you the steps about how we exhale, how we do the exhale unlocking, how we do the sagittal unlocking, how we do sylvian dissection to the, do the intradural oblique unlocking, and then how the skull base is laid bare for you so that we, you don't have to retract too much and you have very good access. So this is exactly what we're going to talk about right now. And uh, the whole world is watching a neurosurgical TV. So, so John wants me to go Facebook Live on this so that uh, you get to know that we are starting very soon. And uh, by the way, behind me is a Tesla coil. You can see that Tesla coil. You can see that. You see that? Uh, you know, these are the things that we get to experiment on during the uh, corona time. So it's a great, great time actually. So I know we have to pray and we have to do whatever is possible for people uh, who needs help. So precisely, we are in the hospital. I'm in the hospital right now. We've got emergency surgeries, which we are not stopping even now. And we stay in the hospital uh, premises so that we can take care of our patients. And during this time, it's very, very less busy. So we can go ahead and uh, educate as many people, as, as many neurosurgeons as they can. So any of you young neurosurgeons, senior neurosurgeons, whoever is watching, this is our technique of anterolateral skull base dissection. And come over to neurosurgery uh, and then watch it. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, I, now we're telling your followers basically you're live now, uh, which is which is great. Uh, and uh, we put the link on your Facebook Live below, so anyone wanting to get in the panel should be able to come in. I'm going to call Chandra. Chandra is uh, uh, is going to be in the panel today, so I'm going to call Chandra right now. Okay. And ask, ask him to get into the panel. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> you get to see that. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to log in. Yeah, I mean, uh, are you having any uh, problem? Can I ask John to contact you or something? Uh, let him talk to me. Maybe on my laptop, which I'm uh, using today, yeah. uh, probably I have not downloaded. So that may be one reason. Okay, I'm okay. just downloading it at the moment, but if you can talk to 
of the payment finance. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I'll ask John to uh, talk to you. John, I'm going to forward you Professor Dupujari's number. Uh, yeah. And then can you talk to him once, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, just forward me his email address, too. Um, and, I don't know. I can, I can, you, you, you have forwarded me. It says that your meeting will begin soon. I am 90% uh, loaded, apparently. Okay, fine. So we will, uh, we're going to wait for you. We're going to wait for you. Yeah. Yeah. Or, if, or you can start, maybe, and I'll join you as soon as I can. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm going to wait. I'm going to just wait with, without showing everything. I mean, without the class right now, I'm just going to be talking to these guys. And once okay. you logged in, you, once you logged in, you tell me if you've got any problems, then we will log you in first and then we will start. Okay. Okay. I'll, I should let you know in two, three minutes. Sure. Done. Done. Okay. Done. 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 John? Yeah. It would yeah, be great to have Chandra. I'm going well, you can you can start, Ipe, and uh, and then he can join in. And I, in the meanwhile, I'll try to contact him. Just send me send me information about him. Yeah, I'm just I'm just sending his uh, I'm just sending his information to you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, listen. So John, uh, today we are going to be. I mean, uh, we're going to be doing this. That that we're going to, going to be doing the cadaveric dissection part, so that. You guys know, uh, all the guys, young neurosurgeons know what exactly you mean by, you know, uh, this anterolateral approach. And uh, yesterday's uh, videos, we told about, Arijit is here. Arijit, uh, you wanted to uh, be in the group, right? Um, I, I can see that Arijit is here. So I, he wanted to be in the group. He messaged me yesterday. Yes, sir. Hey, Arijit. Hi, sir. Hello. Uh, you you are from where are you from, Arijit? I'm from Bangalore Manipal Hospital. I see. Great, excellent. So uh, you wanted to be in the group. I'll add you to that WhatsApp group of neurosurgery coach. Uh, uh, please uh, send me once more WhatsApp. You can you have my WhatsApp number? Uh, no, sir. I don't have. Okay. Uh, John will pass the WhatsApp number for you in chat. So. Um, you can, I mean, you can, you can just message me on WhatsApp and then I will add you to that, uh, that group. Thank you, sir. Yeah, sure. sure. And uh, Dr. Khalif, you are in the group, right? Yes, Prof, I'm in the group. I'm in the group, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Johanna yeah. is in the group. Uh, Saad is in the group. So I can see most of the... Aminata is in the group, so most of the guys are in the group. So you get to know what is yes, happening. Yes, sir, I'm in the group. Great, great. So now what I'm going to do is, um, you know, we're going to have presentations from everybody. That means presentations from you guys as well. So it's Ch Chandra. It's Chandra. Oh, he's John. Yeah, he's Fantastic. Here. Okay, great. So let's see. Let me make sure he's in here. No, he didn't get in. <laughs> Just hold on. Hey, I can see him here. Oh, Hello? okay. Chandra, are you there? Mm -hmm. oh, I think he fell out again. I don't see him. Okay, continue. Uh, he, he's. Uh... Oh, there he is. Chandra, are you there? He is in. I'm going to share now. Okay. Can you all see? Yes. I'll just ask Dr. Dipitari. Yes, Chandra, are you there? Let me just look. Yeah, he's getting settled in, I think. Go ahead, I stop. Yeah, I mean, I'm just asking him whether he's around, so. Okay. Hello? Joining with the audio. No, no, you just can say that join with the inbuilt audio and that'll be all right. And you can put your video on and then uh, you can start. Can you see us? Can you all can you see us? I can see you now. Yeah. Okay, great. So you can see my screen as well, right? Absolutely. 
right right so i uh, can you hear us too from the zoom i cannot hear you no i cannot oh. hear you no. well we sh you should be able to work them in the panel uh chandra at the bottom of your screen turn on your your video camera at the bottom of your screen there should be a video camera just click on that and open open it up Mm. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yes, we can see you now. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yes, excellent. You can, we can see you now. Yeah, I think I'm seeing your screen all right. My only problem now is I am unable to hear so far. Yeah, uh, you can join with the see. audio. I What I'll do is I'm going to start the session. So... Uh, you can join, you can join, yeah, now I think you can, I can hear you too. Okay, if you can hear me fine, I'll, I'll join the, uh, I'll, I just have to find something is missing, so I, I need to click somewhere. Anyway, my WhatsApp is, anyway, my WhatsApp is going to be on, so you can hear what I, what is Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, here we start. Okay, so yesterday we talked about, we need to mute, uh, everybody needs to mute. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yesterday we talked about uh, the three principles of skull base. That is unlocking in the sagittal plane, unlocking in the axial plane, this is both extradural while unlocking in the oblique plane is this is otherwise called sylvian dissection and that is what most surgeons use for getting into skull base so if you can combine sylvian dissection with sagittal unlocking which means taking off the bone between the folds of frontal and temporal dura, that is the greater sphenoid wing, some part of lesser sphenoid wing, some part of orbital roof, you're going to do the sagittal unlocking. And if you can take, mobilize the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus, you are during an ex, you're doing an extra, extra dural mobilization of the temporal lobe away so that you can get into the posterior part of the brain base or the posterior skull base or the interpeduncular fissure, the interpeduncular cisterns. So that is what we're going to show you today. So these are the three unlockings. We're going to show you all three unlockings now. So for your orientation, this is the orbit. That is the orbit. That is the frontal lobe. That is the temporal lobe. And that is the orbitomeningeal band. So the head, this is on the left side. Head is upside down. That is the orbit, orbitomeningeal band. Temporal lobe. You can see the bone anterior to the superior orbital fissure. You can see the frontal lobe, frontal lobe there. Everybody's oriented? Oriented? Yes. Right. So we are going to now start the dissection. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to take off. This is the true cavernous membrane. We are preserving that membrane and we're going to take off the temporal lobe dura. We're going to take off the temporal lobe dura of the cavernous sinus. So what exactly are we doing? We are mobilizing the temporal lobe laterally away from the cavernous sinus. So when you do that, you're going to get a lot of space to get into the 
posterior part of the supracellular system, the interpeduncular cistern and so on. So for example, if you're doing a basilar tip aneurysm, this will give you a lot of space, lot more space. So other than handling cavernous sinus pathology, the beauty of transcavernous dissection is that you're getting a lot of, you're mobilizing the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus and gaining very important millimeters of space between the temporal lobe, third nerve and the carotid to go posteriorly. So right now I am, that is a superior orbital fissure. Anything behind the superior orbital fissure is cavernous sinus. So I'm dissecting the cavernous sinus now. That's the orbitomeningeal band. I'm going to be cutting the orbitomeningeal band soon. So you can see that's a cavernous sinus. That's a true cavernous membrane. You can see the true cavernous membrane there. Under very high magnification, we're cutting the orbitomeningeal band. We will show you in the case also, it is the same way it is done in, in our skull-based cases as well. So you see, right now that is your supracellular system, that frontal base from the frontal base right down there is, is you are already accessing supracellular system. So you've gone that basal. So here your retraction uh, to get into the supracellular system will be almost nil. Imagine you open the dura and also open the sylvian system. It is so wide an axis. It is such a beautiful axis. We don't do craniopharyngiomas with this approach anymore because uh, we, we still think that the endoscopic route is much better for craniopharyngiomas, most craniopharyngiomas, except when there is, of course, a very, very lateral extension. But you see the axis that I'm getting here. You see, that's frontal lobe, that's temporal lobe, that's frontal lobe. And I'm cutting off all the orbitomeningeal band there, everything till I reach the third nerve. So you can see the nerves already, the nerves are, st you're starting to visualize, you're not able to see those nerves right now because these nerves are under the true cavernous membrane and that is the secret of no bleeding. Here, the secret of no bleeding is that it is a cadaver, of course. Um, but we will show you the same thing on the live case. So now you can see the anterior clinoid coming into shape. You see, otherwise how difficult it is to do a clinoidectomy. So now once I dissect the orbitomeningeal band and mobilize the temporal lobe laterally, all the secrets start coming out. And the first secret extradurally that you will see is this clinoid process. Uncovering the clinoid process. So here we are uncovering the clinoid process, seeing further nerves there. That'll be the V1. Further going back towards the trigeminal ganglion. Very, very fine. So you can see the fourth nerve starting to, starting to be visualized. That's the fourth nerve. And that is the clinoid process. Now, if you mobilize the third nerve away, this clinoid process can be taken out very easily. I'll show you. My colleague removes this clinoid process with, uh, you will not believe what, but don't do this in the cases, please. So you can see the fourth nerve there the fourth nerve there, the third nerve is down there. I mean, it is below there. Below there. So that's a superior orbital fissure. The third nerve is below that dural fold. That's the fourth nerve. And that is V1. And that's a clinoid process. And just here will be the optic nerve. So that is what you're going to see now. We are dissecting a little bit more so that you know, if you have space, don't try to retract. If you are retracting, it's bad technique. If you're using pressure, that's bad technique. Now, see my colleague, how is he removing the clinoid process? 
It's not recommended in normal cases, for sure. It's not recommended. But uh, you see, after exposing the clinoid like that, you can take off that clinoid like that, OK? See how it is being bisected free. And you know, you must understand that's a carotid oculomotor membrane. So you have to be very careful because between just below the carotid oculomotor membrane, there is a carotid. Okay, I will show you a case also where we do the same thing. Okay, we do the same thing. I'll show you the case where with the paraclinoid aneurysm. We'll show you right now. So that is the optic nerve. So we are biting off all that towards the strut. Under very high magnification, under excellent visualization. So that is the carotid. This is the optic nerve. That is the optic roof. So we are biting towards the carotid, I mean, towards the strut. So that's a carotid. That's a clinoid triangle. That's a fourth nerve. That is V1. Okay. So we are defining the strut and drilling the strut. It's very important to drill the strut because in most transitional aneurysms, strut is going to be a stumbling block for you. And always remember, strut as well as the optic roof has to be drilled away to, for uh, mobilization in this region. Okay, so that is your optic roof. It has to be drilled under very, very good irrigation and low speed. I would suggest low speed. Okay, take your time. Take a lot of time. So that is the entire optic now. You can see under how much magnification we are in. And that is the strut, remainder of the strut. That is the carotid. Okay, so now we're going back. That is V1, V2. So that triangle was here under very high magnification. So you can see the fourth nerve, V1, V2, V3, and that is the gazerian ganglion. You see that is the gazerian ganglion. And we are dissecting further. So you have the optic nerve there. Let me just show this back. So you have the optic nerve there. You have the carotid and the clinoid triangle there. You have the fourth nerve there, third nerve is underneath. It is V1, you have V2 there. You are going to see the V3 very soon now. So we're going towards the Kawase's triangle. So this is a combination of, and now what I'm showing you is I'm going to open between the fourth nerve and the V1. This is called the Parkinson's triangle, okay? So sometimes when we have uh, a large pitropliable meningioma, we open this triangle to get the meningohypophyseal artery, okay? So we do pitropliables through, through this combined approach where we open this and we're gonna show you the C5 carotid, you know, the paraclival carotid. So the endoscopic surgeon see it as paraclival carotid. That's the paraclival carotid, okay? So that is V1 and, you know, medial to V1, just lateral to the paraclival carotid is your sixth nerve. The sixth nerve will come right medial to V1. So that is the paraclival carotid. That is the vertical carotid, paraclival carotid. That carotid will turn a C4 and then C3 there. Okay, so I'm going to define this. So that is the lacunae of the cavernous sinus. If it bleeds, you can just put a little bit of uh, surgery cell there and wait. Nothing happens if you don't extensively coagulate or you don't, you should not coagulate at all in this region because you will have six nerve palsy, okay? So you are going to see this. I will show you uh, in the coming, uh, the, in the coming uh, days, I can show you a case where we've gone inside and then we take out the meningohypophyseal branch. We can show you that also. Now I'm going to show you the six nerve. So you can see the six nerve already peeping out there. That is a C5 vertical carotid. And that's the top of the vertical carotid. And that is the six now. That is a six now. You can see the six now? Clearly? That is six now. So I'm just hooking up the six, hooking out the six now. You never do that in a, uh, in a case because if you do that, you'll have a six now paresis for some time, all right? 
So that's a C5 carotid. That's a paraclival carotid. Okay. That's a, so in the in the Parkinson's triangle, what you're going to get is the junction between the C4 carotid and the C5 carotid. Okay. C5 carotid is paraclival, and C4 carotid is the horizontal uh, intracavernous carotid. Now this is. The, this is the junction between the V1 and the V2, and then you get the ant, anterior most portion of the inferior part of C5. That is what you will get, the paraclival carotid. Okay? If you go between V1 and V2, you will never be able to reach the meningohypophasive. So each of these triangles, you need to know what you get when you go through each of these triangles. Okay? It's very important. You cannot enter the cavernous sinus wherever you want. It is... Uh, it is, a, it is for lateral surgeons, surgeons going to the cavernous sinus with a lateral route. It's extremely important. Sometimes you enter the roof, which I will show you in this case that I will show you how we enter the roof of the cavernous sinus. And then sometimes for meningohypophysal artery, you need to enter the Parkinson's triangle between the 4 and V1. Sometimes you need to enter between V1 and V2. These are the corridors to the cavernous sinus. So now I'm going to put a stitch and I'm going to, uh, that is your V3, and that is your Peter's apex, Peter's apex. So, Peter's apex being shown. It's being dissected now. And I'm going to first delineate the C6 carotid. You saw the paraclival carotid here, and the Peter's carotid is going to be running like that, okay, parallel to the GSPN. So the first thing I will do is I will delineate the Peter's carotid. All right. So <clears throat> once I do the, uh, once I delineate the Peter's carotid, then it is very easy. That's the Peter's carotid. You can see the Peter's carotid already. Okay. So once I delineate the Peter's carotid, I can go laterally as much as I want. So this part will be the cochlea. There will be the internal uh, acoustic meatus. So I'm going to uh, take off as laterally as possible. So if you do a petrosectomy, which is not as wide, then you're going through, uh, like, you know, you, you, you need to use the endoscope or something. I mean, it is not good for you to do a small petrosectomy. And when you combine this approach with the petrosectomy, Dollings with the petrosectomy, you get an excellent corridor, ex especially to sphenopetrocliver. So you can see the carotid being mobilized laterally now. That carotid is being mobilized laterally. That is a C6 carotid. So you saw the C5 carotid here. You can still, still see the C5 carotid here. Okay. And that is your gazerian ganglion. That is your V1, V2, V3, and your C6 carotid there. And I'm going to drill off. Now I'm going to drill off the entire uh, Peter's apex. I call it an extended Peter's apex drilling. So I drill even posterior to IA. Okay. I go drill posterior to IAM so that I can take out these tumors without struggling too much. You know, I am extremely lazy when it comes to struggling. I don't like struggling. So I, I take as much as bone and bone drilling is uh, very easy, the easiest thing, you know. So you keep on drilling, 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 putting water, drilling, listening to a good song and then drilling, drilling, drilling. So you don't struggle much, you know. Uh, Right, so we go ahead, drill off this Peter's apex. And once you drill off all this Peter's apex, you know you will reach the inferior petrosal sinus at the lower junction. You can already see the IAM there. You can see the thin bone of the IAM there. So uh, you must understand that the cochlear, cochlear bone is here, anterior to the IAM. The C6 is there, so you get such a lateral, such a wide lateral corridor. And then you take out all that bone. You know, in endoscopy, you can do sublaceral drilling. That is the same drilling that I'm doing right now. The sublaceral drilling. So you uh, go parallel to C6 carotid and then you drill. But that is a, I mean, that I think uh, I have seen uh, my good friends Paul and uh, uh, Paul doing it, Paul and Snederman, both of them doing it, but that is so difficult. I mean, I, I, I think it is so difficult because for me, this is much more easier. So I'm going to re remove this 
remove this complete bridge of bone from the posterior fossa. So you can see the IAM now. You can see the posterior fossa dura. You can see the fifth nerve coming in. You can see the temporal dura. You see, this is exactly where the petroclavial meningiomas are attached. Okay, the petroclavial meningiomas are attached here. So you take out this bone, you do this approach, they are there for ripe picking. Okay, uh, you shouldn't pick them because sometimes they are attached to the uh, basilla, they enclose the basilla artery. Uh, we can have disasters, I've had those. Okay, so don't pick it for sure. You will have to keep on decompressing it. So now, first, what I do is I open the dura of the fifth nerve. So you can see the pons there, you can see the pons there, that is the fifth nerve coming in. So that is the dura open over the Meckel's cave. And then you can go ahead and open till the IAM. Okay. That is what we're going to do right now. When you are opening, you can you could open over the temporal lobe and cut the tent also. This is what you need to do for sphenopetroclival, large petroclival meningiomas. You will have to take care of the fourth nerve, where the fourth nerve is going to join the tent. So you need to go posterior to that. And that is how you cut the tent. And then you need to detach the fourth nerve from the tent by cutting a part of tent along with the fourth nerve away. So sometimes the fourth nerve is the most common fatality. I mean, the most common morbidity that you have when you do this kind of tumors. So uh, sometimes, you know, more manipulation, it results in fourth nerve palsy. So you, now I'm putting a stitch. This is exactly what we do in cases also. Uh, take a stitch and pull that dura forward. You can see this is the carotid and this carotid gives the meningohypophyseal branch. And that is what is going to supply. That is, that is the artery, which the artery of Bernasconi and Casinari. That is what is going to supply the petroclavial meningioma. Tendoral meningioma is also, that is what is going to supply. So you bipolar in this region, taking care that this is six now. I showed you the six now last time. So don't bipolar in this region. This is where the meningohypophyseal artery comes. You buy bipolar and cut that off your tumors. Uh, your tumor blood supply is going to be reduced very much. So that's the anterior part of the lateral part of the pons, and that is the anterior part of the pons. So you can see now the fifth nerve there, and the third nerve there, that's a third nerve there, and you can see the superior cerebellar artery, the duplicated superior cerebellar artery coming down from the third nerve, and then you can see now, you can see the eighth nerve also there. That's the seventh, eighth complex there. So IAM has been opened. That's, you can see the loop of ICA there. And that is the fifth nerve there. That is the fifth nerve. You can see the third nerve. That is the posterior border of the pons. Okay, so you got such a beautiful exposure. So you can see from the second nerve, the, the clinoid triangle, the third nerve going into the roof of the uh, cavernous sinus, the fifth nerve, and the seventh, eighth complex. So that's the entire brain stem there. That's your frontal lobe, and your temporal lobe is being completely mobilized laterally. So thank you very much. So uh, we can first discuss this, and then we can show you uh, aneurysm where uh, we, we are doing the same thing. Or maybe we can do this aneurysm tomorrow. Um, I would uh, be waiting for uh, comments from all the uh, people. So I'm going to stop sharing now. Very good. Thank I, you very much. Very good. I, yeah. Thank you. Okay, yeah, the floor I'm, is open. Yeah. So okay, I, I, you're, you're going, you went mute. I, uh, hold on. You're mute. I, let me. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, I would okay. like to hear the comments and uh, any discussions from the floor now. Come on, guys, wake up. Is anyone uh, there? <laughs> Hello, bro. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing? How you been? I'm fine. It was an excellent, excellent lecture. Thank you, Prof. 
I would like to ask what is the difference between Kawasi and Doling and Hakupa in the approach of the uh, cavernous sinus? <laughs> and when you use it? Uh, to, be frank, I, to be frank, I really don't know. Um, I don't know what is the difference, but, uh, uh, but I do this approach. So I, I have lectured in, uh, uh, I have lectured in both uh, Kawase Center as well as uh, in Ljubljana at Dolan Center. I have lectured this both. So obviously I have taken these approaches from them, um, but I combine both of these and I really don't go by names. I have never named anything. I will never name anything after my name as well. So I'm not going to go by names. And this approach, what I showed you, is going to be extremely helpful for you in terms of anterolateral skull base. You don't have to go this extensive. Uh, I've shown this extensive because if you know this extensive, then you can handle many, many pathologies. Okay, starting from, that is the pathologies that I'm going to show you for the next uh, four days or so. We're going to show you basal aneurysms. We're going to show you uh, DAVFs, which are supplied by the meningohypophyseal artery. We're going to show you uh, other uh, skull-based tumors, which you can take by this approach. So uh, this approach forms the basis for most of these tumors. But if you ask me whether it's Hakuba, Kawase, uh, these approaches are always evolving. Uh, what uh, Professor Kawase did uh, many years back is not exactly what he's doing right now. It, uh, and some, some extensive approaches need not be done, actually. I mean, what I showed right now, I wouldn't no. do in days. I would tailor it most of the time for what is needed. I, I mean, I've just shown it right now only because I want you guys to understand the concept. This is not exactly what I will do for every case. Okay, thank okay. you, Prof. Uh, what do you think about your tips in the preservation of the true membrane of the cavernous sinus and uh, localization of the meningeal hypophyseal artery. I, I didn't get you. I didn't get the, I didn't get the question. Uh, your tips and your recommendation in uh, protecting the true cavernous sinus, how to dissect safely and how to localize the meningeal hypophyseal trunk. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so for the true cavernous membrane, it's very, very important. Three things are very important. Number one, you have to be under very, very high magnification. Okay, you cannot peel it off just like you peel off uh, anything. You peel off an orange peel or something. If you peel it off, you're going to hurt the true cavernous membrane. Sharp dissection, high magnification, and starting from the orbitomeningeal band. Start from the orbitomeningeal band, you will not hurt true cavernous membrane. You must have very high magnification and always do sharp dissection. Use a diamond knife or use a scissor. If you don't have a diamond knife, use a curved scissor. The curve should be away from the true cavernous membrane. So you cut parallel to the true cavernous membrane. And if there is a little bit of bleeding, don't panic. Just put a little bit of surgicel, irrigate for some amount of time. It's going to be as neat as ever. If you bipolar, if you pack too much, and then you continue your dissection during the time it's bleeding, it's going to be difficult, okay? So these are, my, uh, these are my points. I mean, these are the things that I learned over a period of time that, uh, you know, you just need to wait and the high magnification, sharp dissection, and dissection through the orbitomeningeal band. Thank Very you. Good. Well, you're from Sudan, correct? Yeah, I'm from Sudan and these days in Sudan, that's very good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome back. Yeah, I've got two other questions. So, uh, okay, to what exact endpoints or anatomical boundaries of Peter's apex drilling? Well, um, you can do an extended Peter's apex drilling by actually drilling the V3 into the infratemporal fossa. You could reach the infratemporal fossa by drilling between the V2 and the V3. And uh, you could drill, you could skeletonize the entire V3 and uh, you could move the entire Meckel's, I mean, entire gazerian ganglion anteriorly and you can drill the bone between the C6 carotid and the, you mean the true, entire true Peter's apex can be drilled if you need it. So this is a infra gazerian drilling that can be done. Um, so for, some, for some pathologies, this is necessary. 
So you can do that. The risks are that you, you need to check out for a um, displaced carotid. I mean, sometimes the carotid is laterally displaced and this, this can be disastrous. You shouldn't do that. And the uh, other thing is you can have six nerve palsy sometimes, okay? Now, um, posterior limit, people say, is the superior, uh, is the arcuate eminence? Not really. You can uh, skeletonize the superior semicircular canal and even go posterior to the IAM. You can go to the IAM, skeletonize the IAM, just like what I showed you right now. And you can do a post-IAM drilling as well. So this makes a huge um, Petrus apex. So sometimes through only this approach, you can uh, clip basilar tip aneurysms or do even a, a P2 to occipital artery anastomosis, occipital to P2 anastomosis, or you can uh, take out tumors and things like that, okay? That is, uh, so there's no real limits of petrous drilling, but then of course, yes, inferior petrous sinus is a limit. Um, the true apex of petrous is a limit and posterior to the IAM, you really don't want to get into the semicircular, I mean, you really don't want to get into the semicircular canals and stuff, okay? That is for, uh, you know, the translab approach. You, you don't want to, you don't want to combine this with that. Although sometimes, yes, we, you could. Now, the next uh, question, the resection of the orbitomeningeal ba band is parallel to the anterior clinoid. Yes, it's, pa it's parallel to the cavernous membrane. So, uh, you, when you cut the orbitomeningeal band, you will reach, you will reach the, the point where you see the true cavernous membrane. And from there on, it's parallel to the cavernous sinus. I mean, no amount of my saying will, uh, uh, will make you understand that unless you see it and then you do it. So. I would advise you uh, come down to Biratnagar sometime. We have cadaver labs going on. I mean, because of the corona, for the four months we won't have. Otherwise, we have fellows, four fellows. Every, every month we have four fellows. So come down, we have a cadaver lab. So we will show you how to do this. And all my fellows who, who's been there, they know how to do this. So come down and I will show you this. Okay, any Thank questions? Thank you very much, bro. Any questions and from the panel or comments? Uh, the moderator, Professor uh, Dipujari. There we go. Uh, I, I think it's, it's been an excellent demonstration. Unfortunately, I have to do something with my uh, settings because I'm not able to join you on the audio on the web. We can but hear him fine. The phone. And uh, it's been an excellent dissection. I think the importance of many more orbital band you have wonderfully described and uh, all the dissection was I'm, I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you very can, much. Can you say a few words about Dr. Tio Bujari, who he is and stuff? Because some people don't know. <laughs> uh. Yeah, uh, to all the panel, Professor Dio Pujari is one of the senior most uh, endoscopic surgeons, world famous endoscopic surgeons. Um, everybody has to learn a lot from him. We, we've asked him to give us, deliver some lectures for us. So it would be an excellent opportunity to learn from his experience and uh, his skills. So, um, I mean, I don't think anybody needs an introduction for him, but uh, those of you who don't know him, he's a world famous, uh, one of the best endoscopic uh, neurosurgeons. Great, okay. Nice to meet you. Any comments or questions from the panel? <clears throat> Khalif, you're quiet today. <laughs> okay. I, I'm following the whole thing. Okay. Uh, excellent demonstration, Prof. Thank you so much. But yeah, but I will. I, I hope I'll prepare some MCQ questions for the for the next class related to the yeah. to this topic. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, John, we have to schedule classes for. Prabhs uh, um, Dipujari, and um, uh, you will have to help him out as to how to do this. So yes. um, from Saturdays, I think he's going to do it from Saturday. So um, let us let us. I mean, we, I'll, I'll be very happy to uh, attend these his classes as well. So um, let's see how we involve more and more people. Louis Borba is uh, very willing to do some classes. Louis is a very very good friend. Narayan Janakiram is willing, Sampath is willing, uh, maybe Ali Krish, uh, let me ask Juha also if he's willing to do some classes. 
So we can get all, uh, all these people involved and then these classes would be, I'm sure it would be very good. So let us see how it goes. Well, you know, I, adding the Facebook Live uh, helped, I think. I think it brought more people in. It brought uh, your, some of your followers in. Yeah. So uh, during this time, the corona period, that's about three weeks, we will make sure that uh, the neurosurgical world gets, uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, neurosurgical uh, operative uh, data instead of p-values. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, so thank you all. Thank you, Professor Deepachari, for coming in. Okay. Um, and if I call him Chandra, I'm, sh I'm sure Deepak will be upset with me. <laughs> okay. Call him that. Can, and, I, can uh, I add something real quick here? Sure. Yes. Uh, my, my name is uh, Akhil Pabani. I'm, uh, I'm one of the, uh, I'm a neurosurgeon out in the, in the U.S. And uh, I had the opportunity to meet Dr. Chirian uh, at St. Louis one time. Uh, when Dr. Abdul Rauf uh, brought everybody together. This was at least two or three years ago. I was a resident at that time, and since then, I've uh, finished my skull-based fellowship with, uh, with uh, Dr. Nanda, Anil Nanda in Shreveport. Um, so I'm in Ohio right now, um, and I do a fair amount of skull-based work, but this is the first time uh, on, uh, on this forum that I've been... Oh, I we lost the audio there. <laughs> of all time to lose it. <laughs> Well, we lost your audio there. Can you, can you repeat? Uh, he may have fallen off. I'm Hello. live here and I have one question if you can okay. hear me. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. Can you hear me now? Hello. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, please. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So, yeah, no, so I, I just wanted to thank for putting this thing together. Um, it's, it's, it's great to see everybody from all different parts of the, uh, of the globe uh, coming together for one great reason. And uh, the contributions by Dr. Chirian and the rest of the faculty are, are fantastic. Uh, at some point in time, I would also like to take the opportunity to share some of my uh, humble cases and even sometimes complications so that we all can learn from them. I feel like complications are one thing that really nobody's eager to share, but I feel like those are one thing that everybody learns the most from them. So if I can get an opportunity in the future, that would be uh, that would be very honorable for me. Yes, please leave your contact info in the chat box. Do you know where the chat box is? Yes, I do. Yeah, please put your email and contact info. We'd love to have you lecture. You will be very, very welcome. I want all of you, not just the mentors, every one of you. You are one of the mentors, but every one of you. Every one of you should take classes. So that is my idea. I mean, this is we all learn from each other. That is the whole idea, and that is how we improve. Uh, it's not that we've just been uh, here for 10 years or 20 years, or I mean, much there are people who are much more experienced. We get narrowed down, our focus gets narrowed down, so therefore, we learn, we, we forget a lot of other things. So, it's always good to hear and learn from uh, all of you. So, I mean, I would like your classes. I mean, yes, complications. Um, yes, of course, I mean, we would never be here without these complications. Um, you know, I, I always tell people I, I can show you so many complications. That's exactly what uh, I, I learned the maximum from them. It's a heartbreak, but it's of course, these are the things which make you learn so much. So yes, if you want to share, we can share our complications. I can show you um, some disastrous cases. Uh, uh, and, okay. So, yes, uh, I will be ha happy to have your classes. We'll be honored to have you on the panel. And my best to Salim. Salim is a good friend. I, was, I used to teach in um, St. Louis in, back in 2012, 2013, 2014 and all. I used to teach in St. Louis as Salim's faculty. And um, he is still very good friends. Uh, last year he was in Nepal. So he, he has been to my farm. He and his wife, Maria, has been to my farm. I've been to his home, so we've been very good friends. My best. Thank friend. you, Doctor. Yeah. I have a question. Can I ask, please? Sure. Yes, please. Hello. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you for this amazing lecture. It was very helpful. And um, I would like to ask you, um, there's a question that I always wonder about. Um, during surgery for brain tumor removal, how do you differentiate between the normal tissue and the malignant cells, especially in malignant cancers? 
because I know that the benign tumors are usually have capsule and you can differentiate, but in case of malignant tumors, how, how do you differentiate that you have um, removed all the malignant cells and you kept the brain, normal brain tissue without touching it? Yeah, frankly, I sometimes it's very difficult, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes it's really difficult. What I try to do is my tips for, um, or, or what my experience, I mean, I'm sure Professor Chandra will have a lot to say about that. Let me put uh, Professor Chandra also on uh, uh, the line. Uh, Professor Chandra, there is a see Chandra, there is this question. See, somebody is asking how to differentiate uh, normal tissue from brain tumor. So I'm going to give my answer, and then maybe you could chip in. Uh, are you still there? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I uh, uh, logged out of the uh, uh, site, but I can talk on the phone if you if that can be yes. possible. Or how how do I do it? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay. You can talk on the phone. So. I'm going to answer the question, yeah. and after that, I would like you to uh, share. Um, sure. So yeah. um, this question, uh, it's an excellent question. So how to differentiate a malignant tumor from, uh, uh, you know, normal brain? Now, normal tissue. So for example, if it's an extradural tumor, normal tissue, you mean normal nerves and things like that. So the best thing, first thing I would do is to use a lot of water, okay? to use a lot of water. So in fact, uh, this is one of the reasons, I mean, I do literally underwater surgery. So people who've seen me doing aneurysms or doing uh, tumors, I use a lot of dissection. I mean, dissection as well as a lot of irrigation. So uh, when you irrigate uh, and under high magnification, for some reason for me, I don't know about uh, other people has used it or not, but for me, Tumor tissue uh, on this on irrigation, uh, it behaves a little bit different from the normal tissue. Okay, number two, always respect uh, boundaries like arachnoid. So don't try and bipolar, or don't try, um, don't try and uh, you know uh, put undue traction or undue pressure. So that or bipolar too much. This is one. This is one thing that can create uh, a lot of confusions. So try to irrigate. Try to be under high magnification all the time. Of course, if you want your perspective, you can come back with less magnification and then look at things again to just to get the perspective back. But always try high magnification, lot of irrigation, and be slow. Okay, these are my things. Of course, you can use uh, other uh, fluorescents. You can. I, mean, I I would like to add. I mean, I think uh, 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 irrigation is extremely important because it uh, maintains the planes and it allows you to dissect. Uh, you know, taking care of the arachnoid. But the most important thing, as you said, most of the tumors which we are operating in this area are usually extra arachnoid tumors. Yes. And. Uh, Whenever there is a pile invasion, you usually get some kind of a, uh, information from the pre-operative MR if you have studied carefully. Yes. Uh, that there may be invasion of the PR at point. And in those cases, I think we know that we can get into trouble and we have to be conservative. There we can get into uh, problems. But if you leave those cases, I think in most other cases, a proper irrigation and not to violate the arachnoid gives you the best protection. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. That is uh, respecting the arachnoid plane is very important. That's what Professor Chandra was telling about. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, any comments or anybody want to introduce themselves? I don't know if we met everybody. Uh, Joanna, Grace, Dr. Chirag, Christian, if you want to introduce yourself, now's the time. Now, of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. Saad, I guess we've met Saad. Joanna, Joanna from Finland, are you there? Hi, guys. Uh, yeah, do you want to weigh in on the topic? Sorry, what did you do, say? Do you have any comments or questions for Ike? 
No, actually, um, okay. it's, it's always so amazing. Like, um, he's really on point. He's really excellent of uh, showing, showing the, actually, the sort of summary of things. Thank you. Really good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So, good to see all of you, Manuel, uh, the two Manuels, and uh, all the other guys. So, good to see you. Tomorrow, again, we will have this meeting, and tomorrow we will show the cases. Tomorrow we will show a paraclinoid aneurysm using the same principle. So, I, I hope you can go through this uh, video once more, and tomorrow you will recognize much more structures than you will if you haven't gone through this video. So, we're going step by step. Uh, yesterday, we, day before yesterday, we talked about the carotid. Uh, yesterday, we talked about what are the unlocking. Today, we showed you what are the unlocking. And then tomorrow, we're going to show you cases now. Okay? So, okay. thank you very much. Um, I, would, I would leave now. So, thank you all for your time. And uh, let's continue tomorrow. Okay. See you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. I... See you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad we got to experiment with Facebook Live. You know, actually, this is not neurosurgery, but I mean, if we change our concept of video and just have portable video, uh, I think, I mean, certainly uh, people look strange at me when they say, before your speech, before you give a presentation, tell your Facebook followers what you're doing. Uh, I mean, it's easily done before you hit the podium. Just Okay, I'm going to talk about this and that. Do you know what I mean? Do you guys know what I mean? Hey, John, I, I just need to leave, uh, John. Yeah. I mean, I okay. we have, a, we have an yeah. emergency. Now, so okay, you, you, the exact title for tomorrow is what? Case, case histories or? No, paraclinoid aneurysm using anterolateral approach. Okay, thank you.